What's up YouTube? So uh, today I'm gonna go over uh, remote camera setup. Now uh, I've talked about this, I talked about this in my last video, but um, I, I want to get more videos where it's on location because that is the best way to give the example. And I will eventually for basketball. Uh, that one you really need to be there and see on location how it's set up. And I will do that. But for now, um, I'm gonna show you. Uh, how to set up a remote with a um, magic arm. Uh, the brand that makes magic arms is Manfrotto. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with that. And as you can see here, we've got the 1DX uh, attached to a uh, lens uh, 16 to 35 millimeter, uh, 2.8 Mark II. So it's a heavier setup. Uh, I will show an even more heavier setup with uh, the 70 to 200. Uh, it is possible. Uh, the weight of these, I'm not sure what the uh, maximum. Uh, limit is, but I can tell you I have seen a D4S uh, Nikon attached to a 300mm 2.8 and I'm sure it can take a little bit more. Uh, it had no problems. Now, so as you can see, we've got right here, it's called a uh, Manfrotto uh, Super Clamp. And what it does is it just basically clamps on to pretty much anything. Uh, you can clamp the sucker onto anything and it is completely stable. It is not going anywhere at all and it's it's stuck on there really well. And they've got a little uh, a little ball head set up right here that, which this attaches to. You can buy these separate, the super clamps, they're about 30 bucks. Uh, but for this whole setup right here as you see, uh, it's about 150 I think. Uh, this part right here attaches to the camera. Uh, and it has it just screws in to the bottom of the little part that's on the DSLR. Now you can just twist it on and um, adjust it up here to tighten it. You can put the little slot in here or on this side, depending on where you want to, what you're attaching it to or how you're attaching it. And it's got the ball head set up right here as well. Uh, both ends have the ball head set up, and uh, you can use different. You can attach this part to different things if you want to use it for a floor. They've got a floor adapter that you can plug in right here. But if you're going to be clamping it on like this, uh, you want a Manfrotto uh, super clamp and the attachment for the DSLR. Um, also, I would recommend the twist knobs for the tightening. They have a different setup. I forget what it's called, but uh, it, this is called the it, it's just a little uh, knob, knob tightener. They, they have photos of it online. You can get these at B&H or Adorama or uh, eBay or Amazon, wherever you buy your stuff at, or in a camera shop. So pretty much how you set it up is you're gonna twist the camera on obviously up here. Uh, you can even pull the, pull it off this part by just uh, twisting this thing right here off and then it'll pop right off and you can put the camera upside down and twist on the gray part onto the camera. And as far as this part goes, uh, let me show you guys. Let me put my camera on a tripod. One second. Let's attach this. There we go. Okay. So pretty much all you have to do, one second, get this in focus. Alright, I think we're in focus. Cool. Alright, so what you're going to do is take this off, start over. I'm going to leave the camera attached just for the time saving sake of it. But pretty much once you've got your camera set up right here, you just take this and this little thing right here just twists and as you can see, it's loosening the this part. It widens up. So this thing can go pretty high up and it clamps onto anything you need it to. So we want to clamp it on right here. So we just put it where you want it. I recommend doing this before the camera's attached. You can take it off like I said and then move the clamp wherever because the camera's so heavy. But you just take it and you just twist this right here. Hope you guys can see this. Keep going, keep going. It'll start getting a little bit more difficult to turn it. I'll keep going a little bit, move it over here. There we go. And you just go as far as you can until it does not move. And voila, there you go. It is not going anywhere. Uh, I recommend putting gaffer tape uh, on the focus ring of the lens. Uh, you can just tape it down so it won't turn whether it's from vibration, if you have it behind a net or something, or if it gets bumped or whatever, uh, 
use gaffer tape. Uh, that's G A F F E R. You can get them in camera stores or online as, uh, from the websites I mentioned earlier. They're really cheap. It's really cheap. Um, just tape it down once you have it pre-focused where you want it. Uh, you want to put your aperture up very high, as high as you can. Uh, I would say, well, not as high as you can, but f11 is pretty good. Uh, anything that's just higher up there so you can move, make your uh, depth of field much larger and have more in focus. And you're going to be using a wider lens anyway, which will give you more in focus already. Um, but it just really depends. But I generally will put my f-stop up very high around f11, f12, uh, just around there. And uh, your shutter speed, it's just like sports. Just treat it like you're shooting sport. You need to have your shutter speed up higher to freeze the action, uh, even if you're not hand-holding it. Um, I mean, the lowest you can probably get away with, uh, again, it depends on the sport. Uh, basketball, 1 5th hundredth probably, lowest, maybe 6 40th. Uh, football, there's no really need for a remote for football. Um, very few things you can do with re remotes on football. Uh, so that, I don't really count that. Soccer, um, a hundredth maybe. Um, you just got to play with it and just see. Uh, if it's a nighttime game, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, get your aperture up as high as you can. But watch your ISO. You don't want to go up too high. And it depends on the camera you're using. It all depends on a lot of things. But just... If you have any questions, please just comment and I will answer them for you. But this is just a general guide. But this is how you get it set up. You just twist this knob right here on the super clamp and it will twist right on there and it is not going anywhere. And then also this little knob down here, I hope you guys can see that. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you just twist this right here and as you can see now the camera is moving around because it's on the ball head right here. And they can move up, down, left, right, work, diagonal, wherever you can put it. Crazy setups, like straight down like that. Or you can move it straight up like that. You can do insane setups. So pretty much you just, all it is is literally, then you twist this knob right here. When you, want it, when you have it in place where you want it, twist it. You'll hear clicks too, if you can hear that. It's just the parts attached hitting, getting really tight, but uh, it ain't going anywhere, as you can see. Uh, it's awesome. You can get six shots with this. I highly recommend it. Just be very cautious and careful where you're putting it. Talk to officials before you do it. If you're going to a sport, especially as you get higher up in the ranks, as you go to college or pro, you got to ask uh, the uh, head photographer for permission. Uh, don't just go in there and set up. Even if you see other people doing it, they've asked for permission. Uh, and just test it beforehand. Don't just go into a, a arena or a wherever you're going and just set it up and just be cautious where you put this. Um, and learn to use it properly and know what you're doing. Also, um, to trigger it, let me go grab some pocket wizards. Uh, where are they? Here we go. Alright. So what you're going to need is uh, Pocket Wizard Plus 3's. Now, there's different types of uh, Pocket Wizards that I've seen, but I know they're discontinued. I think they were called the, the Maxes or whatever, but I don't use those. So, let me get this in focus. Hold on. Uh, that's the best I can do, I think. Hold on. There we go. I think I don't. I know that's probably not in focus all the way. I'm sorry. Okay. So what I would recommend is set it to channel 17. The pocket wizards have multiple channels, so that if other photographers are shooting with these, um, they won't. If they have the same channel set up, it will interfere and trigger multiple cameras. Um, so if you're at a pro event, usually they'll have a list in the media room of what channel they're on, or if you if it's at a big event with a bunch of uh, remote setups. So it really depends. If it's only a couple of people and you do see other remotes, uh, go talk to them and see what channel they're on just so you don't interfere. But if you're able to, I would recommend channel 17 because it gives you the option to do long range, which gives you more distance uh, to be away from your camera so that it will go off. But as far as setting it up, uh, you just hit the little power button or uh, right here. This says mode, and as you can see, it's just swapping through the different options there are. Uh, I don't know what they all do, to be honest, but um, I do know that LR is for long range, and that's what I use all the time. And then set it to channel A or B, C, D. Like there's there's different things you can do, but I just keep it on A because usually it's just me uh, that's using these for the most part. But 
Um, test is what will trigger it. Now what you need is a second pocket wizard because this one's gonna be in your hand or on the other camera you have, depends what your setup is. But the other one is gonna go on top of the hot shoe of the remote camera, like so. Let me uh, adjust my uh, focus and also this, let's see here. Move this up a little bit, put this right there. Uh, and let's manually focus, there we go, cool. Okay, so I have an adapter for Canon, a little cable for Canon. This plugs into the side of the DSLR, so you just open it and find the correct slot. Uh, let's plug this in. And then this part, so this part plugs into where it uh, goes into the side of the DSLR. Depending on what camera you have, there's different uh, plugs for these. Uh, just check it out online, do some research. Uh, and then the other part goes in front of the pocket wizard. Uh, that is right here. I know this isn't in focus, I'm sorry. Uh, it goes right here. So this plugs in the front and voila. But um, I'm gonna plug it into the proper one because it goes on the one that's on top of the hot shoe. You turn on your DSLR, get all your settings all set up, and once you are set up and on the right channel, they both have to be on the same channel, so these are both on channel 17, uh, channel A. Um, both are set to long range, they both have to be. And then once you got it set up, uh, let's get our settings here, turn this down so you can see. I'm just gonna turn on 100 ISO and all that so you can see the fast shutter. Cool. There you go. So you guys can see the distance. I'll walk a little bit back. Uh, it can go way further than this. I don't know the exact distance, but it really depends. Well, there you go. That's how you set up a remote camera. Um, again, before you go and just set one up, be very, uh, just be, you know, polite and ask someone who has authority. Now, another thing I would recommend is if you're going to do basketball remotes behind like the glass where the net's at, definitely ask for permission on that and uh, go to a practice and set it up first. Don't go to the game for the first time and set it up. Um, if you're going to be doing that, if you're going to be putting your camera somewhere where it's a little bit more risky and dangerous, um, I would recommend getting a second uh, pocket, or uh, not pocket wizard, a second um, magic arm and make both ends have a super clamp each because you can do this. <laughs> What I would do is you can set one right here. Can you see this? Okay, cool. Put it right here, somewhere next to it, wherever you're setting up your remote. Oh man, that's already, that's already on there really good. Ugh, okay. Now, the second one is used to ensure that this one isn't going anywhere. These are very reliable, don't get me wrong. This is not necessary unless you are doing some pretty crazy stuff or putting the camera up super high just to be double safe. You take the super clamp, clamp it on where the other one was at and then you can take the second part and attach it to the stick that's connected to the camera and tighten that up. I'll show you guys a close up when I'm done. I'm gonna take a little bit. Okay. Move it around. This is so, like I said, it will ensure that it is not going anywhere. Make sure you tighten the knob as well. There you go. Okay, let me take this off. This is just so that it, hold on. I'm trying to make sure it's in focus. There we go. That way you have double safety. Just if, case, worst case scenario, you're just ready for it. You know what I mean? So it's literally just both clamps are on. The, the, fir the first one clamps on the knob. The knob goes up to the camera. Camera's secure. And then the second one, knob's right there. And it connects to the part where the second stick to the first magic arm goes up to the camera. So that if this one gets loose somehow, and it would normally this would fall over, this part is clamped on to hold it down in place. Um, I would also recommend safety cables. Uh, let me see if I have any so you guys can get an idea. Yeah, I do, cool. Uh, you can go to Home Depot 
and get these custom made. Uh, you just get the thin uh, individual ropes by itself and uh, pretty much get a close up here. Cool. Yeah, uh, it's just little you know, keychain things that you'd normally use that just attach right there and you can just uh, get a, I forget the name. They're the little, uh, do I have any on me? I think I do. Um, shit. Let me see. No, I don't have any on me. I don't think. Wait, there's still hope. Do I have any on me? Uh, I think I found. Yeah. Someone comment on the name of this. I don't know the name of it, but uh, this. This little thingy majig. I don't know if you guys can see that. I forget what they're called. But uh, pretty much what you would do is you just take it and put it inside the part where the you know camera strap would go. Let me. There we are. You just uh, put it up right here and um, wrap it around that part. This is so hard to manage with one hand. And uh, put this thingy majig in, in there. And uh, hold on. This is so hard. There we go. There we go. Okay. So pretty much you just wrap this part around the part where your uh, camera shop would normally go. And then you would take the safety cables. This is for like triple protection. If you, you want to be a thousand percent sure that this is not going anywhere. So pretty much you just take the safety cable you have, attach it to here, and then you would uh, just take the other part of it and you basically just, you know, wrap it around these and uh, wrap it around wherever you're connected to. If it's up high, obviously, is what you would only use this for. Um, but it's just to wrap this all around wherever it's connected to and, you know, just to have more protection. You know what I mean? So that's it for this video, guys. I hope it was helpful. And like I said, uh, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments below in this uh, video. I uh, hope this was helpful to you guys. And remote stuffs are pretty sweet. See you guys later.